Uh, just before we begin now our awards presentations, uh, we should acknowledge two groups who help make the awards program a success. Uh, first, we wish to thank all those who help prepare nomination packages for this year's awards. Thank you very much for the time and the effort that you invested in very impressive submissions this year. You've played an essential role in our celebrations tonight. Secondly, the awards jurors. The jurors are drawn from a wide range of places and talents. They are authors, architects, producers, uh, media professionals, heritage and community activists, community representatives, and also previous award recipients. And they are all capably led by non-voting chairs from the Heritage Toronto Board. Uh, this year's jurors spent quite a bit of time reviewing the nominees and also making their choices. And a list of this year's jurors and non-voting chairs can be found in the souvenir program if you want to take a look. Please join me now in thanking them for their efforts. All right, and now we're going to move into the awards. Uh, these awards recognize and honor volunteers, professionals, individuals, and organizations who have enriched our collective life as Torontonians by making the past vibrant, inspiring, and also relevant, not just for us today, but for all of us in the future. Tonight's awards are comprised of five categories, and they are community heritage, media, book, William Greer Architectural Conservation and Craftsmanship and the Heritage Toronto Members' Choice Award. In three of the categories, Book, Media and William Greer Architectural Conservation and Craftsmanship, there are two levels of awards, an award of merit and an award of excellence. That is the highest award. Sometimes a jury may decide to award an honourable mention. From all the nominations received in each of these three categories, a short list of finalists has been chosen. From this list, the award recipients are being announced for the first time this evening. Full descriptions of all of this year's nominees are found in the Souvenir Program, or you can also visit Heritage Toronto's website, which is heritagetoronto.org. Presenting the awards will be Heritage Toronto Board Chair Alex Pike, Jeff Grist from Brook Restoration, and Eve Lewis from Woodcliffe. We're going to ask each of the award recipients to join us on stage as their name is called, and then please remain on stage while your project is being described. We're going to begin tonight's presentations with the Community Heritage Award category. Now this award is open to one volunteer community-based organization in each of the four community council areas as defined by Toronto City Council. The organization must be currently active and have either initiated or completed a significant activity that promotes, protects, or preserves an aspect of the city's heritage. This is a cash award and no organization is eligible to receive it more than once every five years because it's so much money. <laughs> no, actually, I don't know how much money it is. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, our first Community Heritage Award is for an organization in the Toronto and East York Community Council area. And the award goes to Her Stories Cafe. Congratulations. <laughs> Accepting the award on their behalf is Rose Fine Meyer. Her Stories Cafe was founded to bring together people interested in local women's history through free cafe talks, generally held at a location related to the evening's topic. Topics explored include the history of women's teachers' unions, the experience of black women in 19th century Toronto. Citywide in its reach, Her Stories Cafe seeks to create connections between all those who do history historians, archivists, museum practitioners, teachers, students, and history enthusiasts. The jury recognized Her Stories Cafe for its contemporary and innovative approach to local history programming. The jury also noted that the group has brought to light a wide diversity of perspectives on local history, as well as otherwise untold stories in their own context. Congratulations once again.
Our second Community Heritage Award is presented to an organization from the North York Council area, and the award goes to the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center. Congratulations. <laughs> Accepting the award on behalf of the center is Peter Wakayama. Established in 1963, the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center works to introduce all Canadians to the history and contributions of Canadians of Japanese heritage. The center organizes community festivals and school programs, in addition to offering classes in decorative arts, language, and martial arts. By emphasizing the importance of heritage, tolerance, and understanding, it acts as a living museum and an anchor for the community. In the spring of 2012, the Center hosted the Keisho Conference, which explored the history and legacy of the internment of Japanese Canadians during the Second World War. The jury commended the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center for telling and preserving stories of the community's history in Canada. The organization is commended for encouraging a diverse range of individuals and families to benefit from its resources. Jurors noted that the organization's great contributions to the cultural wealth of the City of Toronto and of all of Canada were very impressive. Congratulations once again. I just want to add my own personal congratulations, Peter. Uh, I have been involved with the Centre for many, many years. Uh, they do fabulous work, I'm biased, uh, and I just want to add as well that this was a very special year for them because just earlier in the year they announced that their earthquake relief fund to benefit the citizens who were affected in Japan by the tsunami and earthquake raised over 1.5 million dollars, which is amazing for a community center. Our last Community Heritage Award for the evening is presented to an organization from the Etobicoke York Council area. And this award goes to West Toronto Junction Historical Society. And accepting the award on behalf of the society is Neil Ross. Congratulations. Founded in 1980, the West Toronto Junction Historical Society describes itself as a heritage preservation advocate. The Society's activities include neighborhood walking tours, monthly talks, theatrical presentations, photo exhibits, and a quarterly newsletter. The Leader and Recorder, that's what it's called, and it's been in continuous production since 1985. In addition, the Society maintains an archive located at the Annette branch of the Toronto Public Library, which is used by experienced researchers and the general public alike. In the spring of 2012, the Society partnered with Mount View Alternative School and Annette School to integrate local history with other curriculum. The jury noted the West Toronto Junction Historical Society's impressive, diligent, and rigorous documenting of the built and cultural history of its neighborhood in a sustained way over many years. The jury commended the Society's approach to leveraging and sharing resources as a model for others to emulate. Congratulations again. And again, just on a personal note, I, I've grown up in the West End, so as a, as a small child, I would always be going with my parents walking through the Junction area, and I still live in the West End and go through there a lot, and it is amazing to see how that community has gone through its ups and downs and has evolved into such a vibrant neighborhood, uh, very focused on uh, the arts and music. So uh, congratulations again to the Junction Historical Society. And the next category of awards is for media. This category salutes projects such as films, videos, and websites that educate the public about aspects of Toronto's archaeological, built, cultural, and natural heritage and history. The first presentation is for an honorable mention, and this goes to the video, The Guild Inn, Save It. Accepting the award, Michael Saunders and John Mason. Congratulations. Produced in March of 2011, this online video tells the story of the Guild Inn and brings attention to its current plight. It showcases the building itself and Canadian sculptures on the property, as well as the architectural features preserved from downtown Toronto buildings demolished decades ago. Viewers gain insight into the Guild's role in the cultural development of the city and are called to rally for its preservation. 
The jury commended the heart and soul of the passionate community activism so apparent in this video. Noting the video's beautiful imagery, the jury also recognized its ability to raise awareness about a neglected but important piece of the city's history. Congratulations again. And the second award is for an award of merit. This is for a short documentary and interactive website called High Rise One Millionth Tower. Accepting the award are the directors of the project, Katerina Sizek, and producer, Jerry Flahive of the National Film Board of Canada. Congratulations to you. <laughs> High Rise One Millionth Tower invites visitors to explore how participatory urban design can transform spaces, places, and minds. Over 1,000 post-war high-rises comprise part of Toronto's architectural legacy. Many are now in a state of disrepair. This project had a group of Kipling high-rise residents, together with architects, re-envision their homes in a story that unfolds in a virtual environment. The jury was impressed by the innovative nature and stunning production values of this documentary. They appreciated its focus on an often overlooked aspect of Toronto's architectural heritage, the post-war high-rise, and the ability of the documentary and accompanying website to inspire us to reimagine and reinvigorate those buildings. Congratulations. Now we're going to move on to the book category. And this category recognizes well-written, non-fiction books published in 2011 that explore Toronto's archaeological, built, cultural, and or natural heritage. The first award in the book category is an honorable mention for Reshaping Toronto's Waterfront. Accepting the award are the editors Jean Desfor and Jennifer Laidley, and from the publisher, University of Toronto Press, Douglas Hildebrand. Congratulations. <laughs> Reshaping Toronto's Waterfront draws on insights from a variety of academic disciplines to explore the past and present of Toronto's waterfront. Fifteen contributors interpret the ways environmental, economic, social, and political processes have combined to shape shoreline development. By analyzing the dramatic transformation of the waterfront during the past 150 years, the book offers insight into the complexity of city building. Jurors describe this book as an intensively researched, important, and relevant collection of essays which analyze both historical and recent waterfront developments. Congratulations. Our second book award is an award of merit, and this is presented to Stanley Barracks, Toronto's Military Legacy. Accepting the award are author Aldana Senzikas and from the publisher Dundurn Press, Kirk Howard. Congratulations. <laughs> Stanley Barracks was established as the New Fort in 1840-41 to at what is now Exhibition Place, and it was meant to replace the aging Fort York. Aldana Senzikas describes the site's remarkable military history, its later uses, including public housing, and the demolition of all but the officers' quarters in the early 1950s. Jurors describe the book as eye-opening and engaging. They found this book a thoroughly researched and very accessible study of a part of Toronto's military history that has previously been underexplored. Congratulations. And our third book award is also an award of merit. This is presented to Unbuilt Toronto 2, More of the City That Might Have Been. Accepting the award are author Mark Osbaldeston and from the publisher Dundurn Press, Kirk Howard. Congratulations. <laughs> Mark Osbaldeston returns with a second look 
at more of Toronto's never-realized architectural and master planning projects. With 150 photographs, maps and illustrations that help the reader imagine how different the city might have been. This book tracks the origins and fates of some of the city's planning, transit and architectural possibilities. The book was judged to be well-researched and written, accessible and thoroughly illustrated. One juror described it as a timely reminder that the city we inhabit is built, or not, on dreams, debates, and choices. Congratulations. And our last book award is an award of excellence, and this is presented to Just a Larger Family, Letters of Marie Williamson from the Canadian Home Front, 1940 to 1944. Accepting the award on behalf of the two editors is Tom Sharp, and from the publisher, Wilfrid Laurier University Press, Ryan Chinsis. Congratulations. <laughs> Just a Larger Family provides a very personal look at life in Toronto during the Second World War. At risk in England, three boys were sent to Toronto by their mother, Margaret Sharp, to live with her cousin, Marie Williamson. The story of this expanded Toronto family is told through the letters that Marie wrote to Margaret, trying to ease her pain at being separated from her sons. The book is enriched by the fact that it is edited by Marie's daughter and one of the boys, and that would be Tom, who is with us from England tonight. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Jurors found this book a wonderfully engaging and informative glimpse through three British boys and their caregivers into the daily lives of Torontonians during those tenuous years of the Second World War. Congratulations. And by the way, I, uh, I should point out that copies of all the books uh, nominated this year, they are available for sale uh, during the reception that is following tonight's presentation. That's courtesy of Ben McNally Books, and you'll find them in the reception area. The fourth category of awards presented tonight is the William Greer Architectural Conservation and Craftsmanship Award. We would now like to ask two other very important people to join us on stage to present these awards. William Greer, one of Toronto's best-known heritage preservation architects. And of course, the man for whom this award is named. And also Donovan Pauly of Clifford Restoration, this evening's award presentation sponsor. Thanks to both of you. This category honors owners who have undertaken projects to restore or adapt buildings or structures that have been in existence for 40 years or more. In addition to the quality of craftsmanship, appropriateness of materials, and the use of sound conservation principles, the jury considers how well the project meets current needs while maintaining the integrity of the original design vision. Our first award is an honorable mention, and it goes to the Hubbard Park Apartments. Accepting the award on behalf of the owner, the Toronto Community Housing Corporation, Mara Nicolaou, and on behalf of those who worked on the project, Terence Van Elslender of Van Elslender Carter Architects Incorporated. Congratulations. <laughs> this project involved a comprehensive rehabilitation of a three-story apartment building constructed in 1927. The building's original interior structure was completely replaced using sustainable design solutions to resolve deteriorated building conditions and to increase energy efficiency. The exterior character was protected throughout construction and care was taken to design new amenity spaces at roof level to be minimally visible from the street. The classically inspired pediment and column surround at the front entrance were retained and the stained glass was restored and hung in the lobby space in the new design. The jury noted that this comprehensive rehabilitation project successfully maintained this heritage building's relationship with the neighborhood built context. At the same time, this project enlarges the discussion and understanding of sustainable adaptive reuse. Congratulations.
Our next architecture award is an award of merit, and it goes to the James Cooper Mansion. Accepting the award on behalf of the developer Tridell is Steve Daniels, and on behalf of all those who worked on the project is Chris Borgel from Goldsmith Borgel and Company Architects and Andre Brochu from Burka Architects. Congratulations. This project involved the restoration of the James Cooper Mansion and its integration into a residential condominium development. Built in 1882, the Second Empire-style mansion was carefully moved 45 feet east to make way for the new 32-story tower and four-story underground parking structure. The later additions to the rear of the mansion were carefully removed to accommodate the new condominium tower. The project included extensive interior and exterior restoration, such as the reinstatement of portions of the building's mansard roof, cornice, and stone masonry, and the repurposing of the mansion's elegant principal rooms as amenity spaces for the residents. The jury commended the skill and effort involved in the preservation, restoration, and reuse of this impressive home so that it can continue to define the character of its neighborhood and interpret its rich history. Congratulations. And our third architectural award is an award of excellence. And this is awarded to the Canadian Stage Company Theatre Building. Accepting the award on behalf of the owner, the City of Toronto, is Joanne Pinn, and on behalf of those who worked on the project is Charles Hazel of Taylor Hazel Architects and Philip Pupi of Clifford Restoration. Congratulations to all of you. This project restored the exterior of the Canadian Stage Company Theatre Building, originally completed in 1889 for consumers' gas. Limiting water penetration was the most important issue addressed at the roof and top of wall level, as well as in areas of deteriorating masonry. The project relied extensively on traditional materials and craftsmanship and included window and door restoration, the replacement of roofing and extensive masonry and structural timber repair. Custom replacement bricks and molded decorative units were manufactured in England to match the originals. The jury was greatly impressed by the quality of both the craftsmanship and the materials involved in this project especially the fabrication and installation of the replacement brick units that will help to ensure the preservation of this building and its continued active use. Congratulations again. Our next architectural award is also an award of excellence and this goes to the Elgin and Winter Garden Theatre. Accepting the award on behalf of the owner, the Ontario Heritage Trust, is its new executive director, Beth Hanna, and on behalf of all those who worked on the project is Romus Bubalis, architect with the Ontario Heritage Trust. Congratulations. Now this project involved the restoration of the two-story Young Street elevation of the Beaux-Arts style theater that first opened in 1914 and is a, it is a national historic site. This project focused on conserving, reproducing and replacing terracotta units using traditional craft technologies. Other work included removing the fiberglass panels used in earlier repairs, refurbishing the original arched wood windows, and the refinishing of wood, brass, and decorative plaster finishes. The jury felt that this project exemplified the successful collaboration of architect, structural engineer, building material manufacturer, and general contractor. The high level of precision and craftsmanship demonstrated by the project team has resulted in an almost flawless conservation effort and the further preservation of one of Toronto's architectural treasures. Congratulations again. Wow, what a team. This is the team we all want for our renovations. Everybody gets along. <laughs> And now our final architectural award. A third award of excellence goes to St. Clement's Anglican Church. 
Accepting the award on behalf of St. Clements is Joan York, and on behalf of those who worked on the project is Elizabeth Davidson of Davidson Langley Architects. Congratulations. This project involved the renovation and restoration of eight connected structures built in several styles between 1891 and 1958 that today make up the St. Clement's Anglican Church complex. The timber trust nave and narthex areas were reconfigured to allow for a more flexible and accessible layout of the space, and the original wood, stone, terrazzo, and stucco were restored. The timber truss structure and original ceiling of the parish hall were exposed and restored, and the space repurposed to support children's and other community uses. The adjacent additions were also renovated, restored, and repurposed, reusing existing woodwork and furniture throughout. The jury applauded the consistently high quality of both the conservation of the building's heritage attributes and the integration of new elements. Jurors considered the result a balanced and respectful series of revitalized church and community spaces that are seamlessly embedded in the neighborhood. Congratulations again. And our final award of the evening is the Heritage Toronto Members Choice Award. Now, all current Heritage Toronto members were invited to vote for this award. They were asked to decide which organization nominated in the Community Heritage Award category was worthy of special recognition. Her Stories Cafe, the Japanese Canadian Cultural Centre, and the West Toronto Junction Historical Society were on the ballot. And the 2012 Member's Choice Award goes to West Toronto Junction Historical Society. Congratulations. Once again, we invite Neil Ross, President of the West Toronto Junction Historical Society, to join us on stage. This is for the second time tonight to receive another award. You look shocked, Neil. You just. <laughs> Congratulations. Once again, applause for the West Toronto Junction Historical Society, Neil Ross. Fabulous. And that was the final award to be presented this evening. But just before we close, uh, I'd like to take one last opportunity to congratulate everyone who's been recognized. And uh, I'd like to ask all our awards recipients to join us now on stage uh, once again. And I would ask uh, the audience just to hold your applause until everyone is on stage. So if you could all please come forward. These are all the people, the recipients who have uh, won tonight. And in the meantime, uh, just let me add, if you'd like to learn more about this year's nominees and recipients, make sure you take home your souvenir program and take a look at it. Uh, also, join us afterwards in the foyer because uh, we're going to have an informal reception. Uh, you can also purchase a copy of this year's nominated books, as I mentioned. Uh, ben McNally has a table. He's got all the books for sale, so you can purchase one there, uh, and as well, all the uh, nominees will be out there. You can speak to them, as well as members of um, Heritage Toronto. So look forward to seeing you at the reception. I think we've got everybody now, do we? Yeah? All right, ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause for our 2012 Heritage Toronto Award recipients. Congratulations. And once again, a sincere thank you again to our sponsors for supporting this evening and also to all of you, our members of the audience, for celebrating with us tonight. It has been a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for coming out. Uh, we'll see you at the reception and then have a safe trip home. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you next year.